Hello, YouTubers. This is a new session where I get to answer such an important question if for anybody who wants to learn and become an AI engineer. The biggest question of them all, how do LLMs actually work? Okay, then we know that there's all these different models, GPT-5 and Mistral and Divstral and all these different models. But how do they work internally? Like everyone is building on top of that. I want you to take a second there, this quick video that will show you exactly how these models actually work internally. So hang in there. It's going to be a lot of drawings and a lot of big words, and hopefully you're going to like what you see. So for starters, you know, a when you start training, just like in our previous video, and I'll kind of drop the link in the chat for you so you kind of know what's going on. Um, in the previous video, we basically fed an, an, an LLM. We brought a bunch of data. So you have a data, a bunch of like a file that has some data in it. Let's just say that the, the file has two words in it. It has hello world. That's all that it has. And essentially, we took that file and we gave it to a bunch of code, a bunch of Python code, right? And this Python code did some stuff, did some magic in it. And then what came from the other side is an LLM. So Python code does magic like that. And then essentially what came out from the other side was an LLM that we can talk to and ping and uh, turn into a GGuff and whatnot. Today, I really want to dig into that little bubble here, that little cloud in here. And I'm going to explain to you in detail, like how it actually works. So here's the deal. When you have a file like this and you're trying to train and create an LLM based on that, the first step that basically happens is something called tokenization. Tokenization. What is tokenization? Tokenization basically picks up every token, not every word. But really, really important that you pay attention to that. It picks up every token in the data that you're trying to train and it finds the right index, the token index or the token index ID that is assigned to that particular word. There's a big vocabulary, vocab dictionary in every model, right? And anything that you type in there, anything in that data has an equivalent that has an equivalent token that has an assigned ID to it. So in other words, when you're doing tokenization, what basically happens, it just so happens that hello world is two tokens. So it basically picks up hello like this and it picks up world and it says, okay, what's the token ID for each one of those? Well, this one's token ID is going to be, let's just say it's not, it doesn't have to be the exact number, but I'm going to show you where these numbers are and you can kind of dig deeper into the LLM and understand how it works. Let's just say this is one, two, three, four, five. And let's just see, say that six, seven, eight, nine right? Six, seven, right? So, okay. So you have hello world and you have a token ID. So you found the token ID for this. What happens next is that when you start pushing that data into a model, we didn't train anything yet. You're pushing that data into a model. The next step here, model initialization, it's going to pick up these IDs and find randomly, randomly assigned Victor values in it. What's a victor? A victor is basically an array of numbers, right? So basically both of them has just a bunch of random victors. It can be much, much bigger than that. It could be 600, you know, kind of values, but think of it as an array, right? If you're a software engineer, you know, 06, 07, 08, you know, just an array like that, just this, this tiny guy. And then the same thing here happens here. Like just say this is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, whatever. So these are victors that these indices or these index, this token index are pointing at. So I'm going to put a, a name in here and say these are victors like that. So you have a victor, you have a token ID, you have a victor. Perfect. So now we initialize. Now we move on into the third phase. And this is where it gets very interesting. Okay. So hello world, just turned it into some number and the numbers became even more numbers, right? Okay. It's starting to get really crazy here with the math, but I promise you it's going to make sense at the very end. The next phase here is the training part. Now pay attention to this one because this is where, where all the magic happens. The training part basically relies on four specific steps. There's something called forward pass. There's calculate loss. There's backward pass. And then there's the update the parameters. What does all of this mean? It basically means that when you basically like think about the training as saying, okay, this is the word hello right here. This is hello. And here's all the possible tokens that will come after her hello. So let's just say 
hello there, hello world, and just, you know, uh, exclamation mark, right? These are, that's the forward pass that basically the model throughout its training, it's basically saying, he, here's a, a bunch of probabilities. These are the values that are very high probability to come after the word hello. So maybe this, the probability of there is 0 0.7, very high, and then world is 0 0.5, and then this exclamation mark is maybe 0 0.3. So here's the most likely tokens that would come after the word hello, because hello, because remember, it's a completion kind of prediction. The next token that comes, you know, that's how it predicts and kind of prints out when you say hello, it'll say hello there, how are you doing? And then it adds in a bunch of, you know, other, you know, context and un un uh, other, you know, uh, data that makes the answer of the LLM super specialized to what you're asking it about. So this is the forward pass phase, right? So let's take this down here and say, here's what it decided. It decided that in this forward pass, forward pass like that, it decided that these are the tokens that are most likely, most probably to come after the word hello. Okay. Now, what happens next is a phase called loss calculations. What does this mean? Well, the model already knows from the document that you shared earlier, which says hello world, what the right answer is. It already knows that hello is supposed to have world after it, right? So when you started the training and it decided based on the victors and the weights that, you know, this is the order of things, it starts saying, hey, this is actually wrong. You were supposed to have like in there, you're supposed to drop down because that's not the highest probability. Right, so this is supposed to decrease, right? And also world is supposed to increase. World is supposed to increase like that. And then this guy may stay the same, like no adjustment, right? Maybe this guy will say, you know, this year, no adjustment. No adjustment like that. So what does this mean? It's basically saying, have I actually in my first pass or my forward pass, have I found the right answers? to the values that I'm working with. Is this actually correct? No, it's not because it was supposed to have world up here. It's supposed to have there down there. And then this exclamation mark is supposed to stay where it's at. Okay, stay with me here. So this is the loss calculation. It's basically the delta between what should be versus what is. And what is is 0.7, but 0.7 is not supposed to be 0.7. It's supposed to be have a lower probability. How does it know that? From the document. In the document, you basically said, hello world, right? Not hello there, not hello exclamation mark. So it knows that it's training have made a mistake. This is a loss, right? Calculation. I'm going to show you that while we're training, you're going to see the loss and it kind of keeps repeating and so on and so forth. Okay. So what happens next? There is backward pass. Watch this. Something very, very, very similar to this. Backward pass. So now it's working backwards and it's basically saying, oh, okay, here's the new weights for this. This is what this is supposed to be seven and then oh five and then whatever. So far, so good. Okay. So that's where the values are supposed to be. Let me iterate and do a parameter calculation. A parameter calculation basically is basically saying, you know, I need to update my parameters. So next time when I run this training, it's actually adjust, it's actually making world come first and then there come second and then whatever else comes after that. So there's a whole big thing down here that basically goes and says parameter update and then iterate. So you, you, you reached all that point here, be like, okay, that's where this is supposed to be. Let's start over. Let's go back into our forward pass. And let's see if we can make this actually find the right number. So the whole idea here is to basically keep updating the weights and keep updating the values on this, you know, kind of iteration, the learning process until it finds the perfect values that would make the prediction 100% correct, right? So it keeps updating and updating and updating until it gets to that point where, okay, the very likely token to come right after this token, hello, all of it represented by numbers is going to be world and then there and then exclamation mark iterate. If you look at the code, 
let's go look at the code for a second. You're going to find in the training parameters here, watch this. Watch this. In the training parameters, we're basically saying, hey, take 200 steps, like keep training 200 times to keep adjusting these values until you get to the perfect one. In fact, actually, at some point, even if you put a million, it doesn't matter because it's always going to get to that specific perfect probability value that it doesn't go from. Learning rate, think of it as how many steps do you want the application to take, right, as it's training, right, to adjust to the new value. So think of it like this. You're teaching a robot to take steps from point A to point B, and you're telling it, take very specific sized steps to get from point A to point B. If you make the steps too large, it may miss the point. And if you may take and, and if you make it too slow, it may take forever. So you want that learning rate to be just right to make it able to reach to that perfect spot where you want it to go from A to B, right? So in general, if you look, when I go and train, like this is my data right here. When I go and train my system, now this should demystify some of the stuff that you're seeing on the screen. Like you're going to see as it's training, it's telling you, oh, look, here's my learning rate. You know, here's the grad norm. Here's my loss. Loss meaning what? It means that I have put the next most likely token in the wrong place. Let's iterate. Let's iterate. Let's iterate. And then I just talked to you about the learning rate and the epoch. The epoch are basically the steps that needs to be taken. And then it comes at the very end and says, okay, here's all the steps that I've taken. As you can see here, do you see how it says 200 out of 200? I specified this is how many iterations I want you to take. Like an iterations essentially is basically that loop, that loop in here going like this, looping, looping, looping 200 times. I'm basically saying do it 200 times to get to the perfect spot, right? And then keep calculating the loss. Here's something very interesting that you will notice. As it's calculating, it starts with very bad value. <coughs> Excuse me. At the top here, see how the loss value is terrible, like five point whatever. And then as you go down, it starts decreasing and going backwards and forward until it gets to a point where it's kind of manageable. The loss is not so big, right? The error is not so bad that it says, okay, this is a good stop. Let's try it with a higher number. Let's just say, I don't know, let's make it 500. It's going to take a second, but the data is not that big. So, and the machine is powerful enough to kind of handle that. Let's do it. Let's do it while we're at it. Watch this. Watch the loss. Watch what's happening. It's saying I'm taking 20 steps, 90 steps out of 500. Watch, watch, watch. Look, the learning rate is dropping. <coughs> Sorry, the loss is dropping. Look, it's going to be like super perfect, right? We reached with the first one to 13. This time it's really, really learning it. And the more steps you give in your training configuration, the lower this value is going to go, right? Eventually, there will be a point where it says, I can't learn any further beyond that point. Look, it's stuck to at 05. There's nothing. See, it's been stuck to 05 for many, many iterations. It's basically, it's basically telling me, Hassan, I can't go any further than that, right? This is the best I can do in here. Um, I hope this kind of help you understand, you know, how these LLMs kind of work in a way. Uh, I'll dig a little bit deeper into the actual math of it, right? Like the actual multiplication. Okay, what is this matrix and the multiplications of these values in the simplest possible terms? But I'm going to kind of just give you a little, you know, a little nugget, something to think about. Be like, okay, I think I understand what's going on. It's taking the words, giving them IDs. It's a, It has the vectors. It finds the vector values for these IDs, and then it keeps adjusting victors and weights you know until it finds the perfect spot where it predicts the perfect the most perfect next token to the token that i'm in i hope you find this a little bit just eye-opening it doesn't have to be super complicated but if you have any questions comments concerns please feel free to drop a comment in the comment section i'll see you in a quick next video very very soon take care